Hey there, um, so a quick little review. This was intended for those that missed class or those that just wanted a, um, to go over it again. Um, talking about 6.1, simple harmonic motion. And a lot of this will apply to everything else we do for this level. Um, but what we did is we analyzed a mass hanging from a spring. So if I hung a mass on a spring and I let it come to rest, then this position right here is called the equilibrium position. Equilibrium. So it's called equilibrium because at this point the net force is equal to zero. Well then if I pulled it down some, some distance, so if I pulled it down some distance or displaced it, we'll call it D. And since it's down, I'll call that you know negative D. Um, this, this displacement from the equilibrium, this is called the amplitude. And with simple harmonic motion, we don't have any outside forces. Um, so as I pull it down, the only force that's acting on it is going to be the spring pulling it back up. So once it reaches this, this position here, once I pulled it down, um, my net force is going to be in the up direction because it's trying to be restored back to equilibrium and that's one of the uh, one of the requirements of having simple harmonic motion we got to have this restoring force so it starts you know I apply some force and then when I let it go this uh, the elastic potential energy will become kinetic energy and when it gets to equilibrium it's all kinetic energy and then it'll continue up and with simple harmonic motion it will be displaced in the upward direction, positive d. So the dis total, dis the magnitude of the displacement in either direction is going to be the same. And again, this is the amplitude. So we get the same amplitude on both sides. So as it goes up, it passes through kinetic energy and then gets transferred back into elastic potential. And now the net force is trying to restore it back to equilibrium. So it'll go down and then so forth and just keeps going and going. And if I was to um, think about the displacement of the mass over time, we end up with a nice sinusoidal curve. So in this case, uh, this graph doesn't match this, but imagine we pushed it up, then it would match. So if I pushed it up and I held it there, then at time zero, there's my displacement. Oh, this one has a little bit of up. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, so as it goes up and reaches its, its maximum displacement, its amplitude, we can see that point on the graph, and then it'll start falling back down, so it starts falling back down. Once it's gone, the displacement is zero, and it's back at equilibrium, that's this point here. And then it continues down, so it continues down and reaches its maximum displacement on the other side, this is the amplitude as well, back to equilibrium, to your max. So these points here, this one, this one, and this one, those are your positive uh, amplitude, or displacement rather, positive displacement. And these points here are going to be your negative displacement. And then right along here, all of these intersections with the x-axis, these are all your equilibrium positions. So as it moves up and down, we get a cool sinusoidal, and then we can, uh, we can analyze that. We'll talk about period here in just a second. So we have some equations that go along with this. Uh, the first one is just the definition of period, and we'll ignore this part right here for now. So the period, T, the time it takes to do one complete oscillation, and I'll talk about more of that in a second, is the inverse of the frequency. Therefore, the frequency is the inverse of the period. So we can write it like that as well. And for a spring system, the period is defined as 2 pi times the square root of the mass times the spring constant. So I need to know mass, I need to know the spring constant, and then I can determine the period. In addition, I can tell the position of the, um, of the mass, and that's simply the amplitude times cosine of 2 pi times the frequency times time. So those are our three equations, our general definition, our uh, definition for a spring system, and then our position um, on a wave.
So this will give me the wherever it is along this wave, which corresponds to the movement. So let's go through. I'm going to show you a demonstration. We'll calculate the uh, the period, the frequency. We'll use this thing. Um, yeah, and I might use that. So I'm just going to use this FET simulation. So here I have a I have a, um, a mass hanging on a spring. I don't know the K, so we can figure it out though. And then what I've done is I've just put the equilibrium position at the top of the mass. Know that if you're doing this, the actual equilibrium would be center of mass. But for this demonstration, it makes it easier if I just put it right at the top. So there's my equilibrium position. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to displace this. I'll pull it down, say 10 centimeters, and then I'll let it go. And I know it's hard to see, but if I put it, if I slow it down, you'll see that it reaches 10 centimeters on this side and then 10 centimeters on the other side. So my amplitude in this case would be 10 centimeters. That's how much it's getting displaced on either side. Now, if I wanted to find the period, well, what I, what I would need to do is um, determine the time it takes to do one complete cycle. And one complete cycle would be, for instance, the bottom from there to there. So one complete cycle, either up and down or down and up, doesn't matter. You could even do it from the middle, although it gets tricky. It would be from there to there. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just time some of these. Oops. So we'll time from the bottom. So when it gets down to the bottom, I'll start it. So we got one, two, three, four, let me speed that up, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so about 630.32. All right. Let me stop that thing, so I'll throw a bunch of friction on there. All right, so I got 6.32 for the, for the uh, time it takes to do 10 complete oscillations, but the, uh, I need to divide that by 10, because a period is the time it takes for one oscillation. So um, period is the time for one cycle. So in this case, my period is, uh, what was it? So divide by 10, you get 0.632, just over half a second. 0.632 seconds per cycle. All right, so now we can do the frequency. So the frequency is the inverse of this. So the frequency is going to be 1 over 0.632. And it's the inverse, so this is cycles per second. So the period tells me the time for a cycle, and the frequency tells me the number of cycles per second. So let me divide that real quick. That's 1 divided by 0.632. So I get the frequency for this thing is 1.58. And uh, cycles per one second, that has a special name, it's called a hertz. So that's that. There's my period, there's my frequency. Now let's try, it. Let's try to do it. Th let's see if we can figure out the K value of that spring, because uh, I don't know what it is, they don't tell you. So I would use the period, 0.632. Or let, me, let, me just, uh, let me just solve for K. Let's do it that way. So to solve for K, I would divide, so I'd get the period of the spring system divided by 2 pi is equal to the square root of the mass over k. And then what we can do is we can just square both sides, so I'd get the square of the period divided by 2 pi squared is going to be m over k, and then I'd multiply and divide, so I get k is going to be the mass divided by all of that. I'm not going to calculate it. But there you go. And if I wanted the position, then my position, my amplitude in this case, remember going back, my amplitude, it's being offset 10 centimeters, so 0.1. There's my phone ringing. It's probably one of you guys. Like, hey, my grade's wrong. You need to update the grades. 
the frequency we calculated 1.58 times t then I can simplify that stuff but that that would tell me the position wherever it is um, and I think that's it I think that covers everything that we talked about again this will apply for any kind of simple harmonic motion it doesn't have to be a string hung vertically it can be horizontally you're gonna see it works for a pendulum as well we'll get a different uh, We'll get a, a special period formula. Um, that's what you're doing in class. So anyway, I hope that helps.